Okay, so I had to share this. This just cracked me up. So, um, whatever I was doing, I was, uh, you know, reading comments and stuff like that. But I went on to TikTok and um, this girl popped up. The one who has all of this different, um, who has the podcast that they keep trying to shut her down, who I said, you know, if you want, it was something I was talking about, I said, if you want to see documented evidence, she shows actual evidence and stuff, not just stuff her guides tells her. But um, anyways, it was funny because when I went on TikTok um, and she popped up and she said, you motherfuckers. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. She's like, you motherfuckers, you fucking bit motherfucking, um, what did she call them? the um big brother because a lot of people think a big brother watching over us and you know invading our space and i think that was part of the kind of um allowing reality tv to take over our minds because then we i mean look how many people wanted to become a you know famous reality star for doing stupid shit like look at that honey boo boo like that show. I think I saw like a few minutes of that show. And it was one where, hey, who can out fart the other one kind of thing. It was weird. And, but I said for a long time, what I have found so kind of astounding is when you go on the stuff that people want to be seen for or famous for. It's like, it's very strange what everybody's, everybody's, you know, wound to their own timer. So, but, um, anyways, so I, I just thought that was so funny. It was like, motherfucker is, uh, word of the day because you know, as soon after I, I came in my head and I just kept hearing it over and over and I kept seeing like these, um, Italian gangsters like talking to each other. And, um, and then I go on there and then uh, she's saying the same thing. I was like, oh, that's so funny. Um, but another thing that I wanted to talk about earlier and I had forgotten. So I saw this girl on, um, I'm pretty sure I saw her today, but like I said, reality is becoming very fuzzy to me anymore. Like, I don't know. Reality is definitely shifting for me. So I saw this girl and she um, was a pretty girl. I mean, you know, very attractive, pretty girl. <clears throat> Not somebody you would look at and go, oh my God, that girl's so beautiful. Like we definitely have people like that who walk around on the planet that everybody turns and, you know, thinks of, oh, they're so beautiful. Like there's some that are kind of in common for us all. And then there's other ones that we all see different things, beautiful and different people. But, um, so, but she was like a regular, pretty girl, like, you know, not one that you would think really stood out, but I didn't see her in person because a lot of times people get so, um, you know, micro fascinated with a feature, like a girl can just get totally hung up on her nose and forget nobody is, you're walking through a room. Nobody's looking at your damn nose. You, I've got yourself stuck in your nose, but people are looking at your whole persona. How do you carry yourself? How do you feel about yourself? How do you present yourself to the world? That's what people see, you know, and if you're all hunched over or you're, o you're overweight and you are, you know, not well taken care of and you're not feeling good about yourself, it shows. That's what shows. Like, I just don't feel good about myself. I feel like shit. You know, and it's physically showing to everybody that I don't feel good and I don't feel good about myself. But there's people who walk around who, you know, it can be totally an ego. You know, I feel so great, you know, walking around and super confident. Because the weird thing was, is when I, this is something that people have always said to me, is like, oh my gosh, you walk around, you're so confident. And I would always be like, this is so strange because I feel like I am overthinking every step I take. I'm wondering who's watching me. I'm so concerned and so worried of every move that I make and that I come across as confident. It's all by perspective and perception. It's weird. But anyways, so, you know, anybody can seem uh, confident, but it is 
you yourself, what you're putting out in the world, how you're presenting self, how you feel about self. And, you know, it could have to do with your style. It could have to do with a lot of things. So, you know, just seeing somebody's face on a little video screen like this, it doesn't really show, like, their whole manifestation. You know what I mean? I think that that is something, even when we would watch movies and stuff, we get an idea in our head, like, Al Pacino's this big, tough guy, you know? And then you see this little puny guy walking through the place. So, you know, we get ideas in our head when we see somebody and it's weird because it really, these girls that are getting so caught up on each little thing and I've been one of them, so I'm not shaming them. I'm just saying it's something that we need to recognize in ourselves because it's not going to change until we recognize it and we uh, promote change, actively create change. So, you know, people getting all caught up and, um, every little feature. I mean, that's, it's just part of consciousness, I guess, becoming aware of its environment and trying to fit in to the rest of the group. But anyways, so, you know, she was a regular looking girl and she was saying, um, that, how did she say it? She said, um, and she looked really, really sad when she's saying it. And she said, um, you know, what's really hard is when you are hot and struggling, nobody sees, um, nobody sees your struggle, you know? And I had noticed that when you have an injury, like a brain injury and people, it's not, a an injury that's right out obvious. Like I'm not walking around with just one arm or whatever. People don't see you as having anything wrong. Like, people just make assumptions. And it's the same for people who have horrible depression. They're always seen. They go out into the world, but people don't ever see them. People don't ever look deep into a person. They just see the outside thing. And they don't go past that. You know what I'm saying? But um, for... Um, so for this girl and she's like feeling that way. And the reason I had said, you know, she's not like extremely beautiful because people think like, oh, well, that would be a problem for some girl who's extremely be beautiful to feel unseen, to not feel like anyone sees who she is on the inside. And, um, but she wasn't extremely beautiful. She wasn't stand up, drop dead gorgeous. She was a regular pretty girl. So this is something that so many people struggle with is this feeling unseen because whatever you look like, it doesn't matter what the fuck you look like. There are people who gravitate towards you in this world who gravitate towards you over what you look like. So whatever you feel like you look like on the inside has nothing to do with what other people see. Other people see something that they are drawn to. And so if they are drawn to you, there's a reason. And if they're not seeing you on the inside, then it is you feel um, unseen. There's, there's something missing. You know, if people develop relationships all based on the outside, but I thought it was so good that this girl said it and it was me. I mean, I said something like what I would say in the comments, but I read the other comments that were there and, um, people are fucking rude. Oh, you think you're hot? Obviously she's been told she's hot a lot. She wouldn't go publicly and say that. She probably has guys on her all the time. Oh my God, you're so hot. You're so hot. She's probably got tons of girlfriends. You're like, oh my God, you're so hot. I wish I was hot. You know, she's probably told all the time. She's not just coming up with this in her own head. She's having something told to her. And when she's speaking out, nobody's hearing her. Nobody's seeing her. And that is what I think so many people are feeling. Not just, it, it, it's just because the superficial world is so stuck on the avatar and they're not to that depth yet. But I just think it's really great for people to start noticing 
Like I'm not being seen. People are not seeing me. I'm struggling here. And all you see is somebody that you think is pretty. It is like, we have to go deeper. We have to want to connect with people. That's part of this growing empathy and compassion. That's part of the coming together for the collective, I believe. And that is how we begin to, you know, form relationships on things that are deeper. See people to their deeper level, to their core. Not getting caught up on their flag t-shirt or their baseball cap or whatever the thing is, you know. I mean, we've been so fucking shallow in this world. It's not even funny. I mean, we've got, I'm right here as a leading example, you know, fake boobs and stuff. Like, I can't even tell you how philosophical of thoughts I've had over this whole situation for so long because it was so much a part of my life where I felt like I wasn't female enough. I was, um, you know, I didn't have a typical girl body. I was very different looking than the other girls. Some girls were jealous of it and some girls, you know, made fun of me. So, uh, and I can completely relate when people are not seeing you for you. Like I have had so many relationships. I've talked about that for uh, since I began talking about not being seen and how we allow that for ourselves because it wouldn't happen if I wouldn't have allowed it. But I was looking for someone to save me, make me feel better. Someone's giving me attention. They're drawn to me. They don't know me. I mean, they don't know me. So how am I deciding, well, they must, they must truly love me. They don't even know me, you know? And we didn't have social media back then to be able to go in and observe somebody beforehand and try and understand them on a deeper level. You know, we didn't have that opportunity. It was very much like when you meet somebody and a lot of people don't, they don't even go with that organic meeting. A lot of people they go out and it's like go on a fishing expedition every night trying to find somebody to connect with. And before they had all of the online, um, you know, Tinder and all that stuff, they always had uh, meeting places. I mean, I, I guess gay guys, they would meet at truck stops and um, truck stops and parks. Like I never knew any of that stuff. Like, it's just weird. Like you don't really know what's going on in different people's communities, but I guess that was a really big thing. And you had, um, uh, people who wanted to go like a whole swingers clubs. There's tons of those swingers clubs, people who just wanted to have open sex with a lot of different people. And a lot of that was going on during the AIDS epidemic and why it was so easy for them to transfer because it was a time when people were really waking up to their sexuality and coming out of that Victorian stage of repression. And so people were really demonstrating a lot of physical, wanting to really feel their body and understand about love and sex and stuff like that in the progression of humanity and their learning and understanding. And then look at how they came in and and use that against them for disease. It's the same thing they're freaking doing. When you think about how we have indoor living and outdoor living, because I've thought a lot about a couple of the videos I've seen recently in that girl talking about how people started making their, they started consuming and then making their lives be like their, their sanctuary, their little place. They had everything that they wanted and, you know, go to work so they can create this home. And then they had to protect the home. I mean, everything became all consuming about the home, which weirdly enough, this was something at my core of my um, husband that I was married to the longest when I raised kids with. <clears throat> that was to his core. He felt that the house, that that lifestyle was consuming him. He couldn't stand it. And that was a big problem in our relationship. I mean, we wanted two different things in, out of life. And, you know, but when, when you are forming relationships that don't have to do with that deeper, what do I want at my core? What am I about at my core? You know, what, are, what am I putting out there? And who am I in alignment with? We, don't, we weren't building. We weren't 
I, I believe we're going to start, but we weren't building relationships based on that. You know, we were, we were going with who we were attracted to and people would go not to just parks and truck stops and, um, swingers clubs and underground clubs and stuff like that. But they had, um, nightclubs became a place where it was just pickup joints. It just became like an era, I think kind of during the eighties, really bad, um, and coincidentally, right, it was a really big drug time where people were doing a lot of drugs and having a lot of wild sex and people were just going and picking up people in the bars. And I always thought I, I was not one of those people. I was like, no, that's not my scene. I like to go out dancing and then you can just be harassed because, you know, people think that you are there for a certain thing. But luckily for me, I was at home raising kids during that time period. I wasn't really, when I came back out, it was the heroin scene in Hollywood. And then I was only around that for, you know, I got to go through the experience. There's a lot of things that I've just, in my life, I've got to go through the experience of. So I feel fortunate about that because it was kind of like what I, what I felt drawn to as a kid when I thought about life. I wanted my life to be a bunch of chapters. I wanted to have a lot of experiences. And so... <clears throat> anyways, um, in that time where it was just a lot of free sex, people just having sex all over the place and, um, and then them introducing something that could be passed through sex easily and then and killing, cause they just do this periodically. And who knows if that's kind of like the test leading up, like, because it's something they've definitely pulled out of the arsenal for this present situation. So was that a test or was it just part of the uh, cleansing, the, <clears throat> cleansing the environment periodically that they do? You know, I, well, everything's always this, um, you know, two birds, one stone situation. So and I, everything with them is like multi-level evil, <laughs> evil tyranny. Um, but anyways, so I was saying about, um, you know, I was really moved that that girl was coming out and saying that because I knew how people are, that they would be attacking her over saying, well, she's not pretty enough. Well, dude, who gives a fuck if you don't think she's pretty? For one thing, you're not seeing her whole self. You're not seeing herself walk through the room. You're not feeling her energy. You're not there with her. You don't know your attraction level to this person, but you just feel motivated to go in and say something mean. That's the same thing I've been talking about with this bullying, you know? And, and that's, the, I think, something that everybody really needs to keep in mind. You don't have to be outlandishly beautiful to not be seen. It, when we're in, living in a completely shallow, superficial world where people are so uh, focused on the external, they're not focused on the internal. Like, would these people be bullying if they felt the pain of hurting others? They're not, they're not, um, fully in with the um, compassion and empathy because they don't feel it. <clears throat> so they're keeping themselves cut off from humanity, probably to protect themselves. Most people are all about just protecting themselves. And so anyways, um, there was like a couple of things I was trying to, I know I always go off and I forget things. Just like when I was going to tell the food bank story, I wasn't meaning to just go into the part about those guys it was funny though, when the manager guy came out and started like chewing him out and saying, Hey, you guys can't do this anymore. This is it. You guys come up here, you put your bags out at five in the morning, you go home and drink your coffee and then you zip back here right before we open. All these other people had to skip their coffee and they had to stand out here and wait. And y'all are taking advantage of the system. And he kept saying that about how people take advantage. Well, see, that's what they do. That's what, what has to change is us. We have to change. And he was saying it in his little speech. And I was like, hell yeah. Um, you know, because this is the philosophy that we have to be putting out there. We can't just play each other and do fucked up things. If we want change, if we want the world to be different, we have to be different. That's the whole thing of walking the path, showing it, holding the light, being true to what you say. And walk your walk. Don't just say a bunch of stuff because that's what's been allowed for so long in this world. 
and, you know, oh, I'm a Christian, so I'm a good person. I'll tell you all what to do and stuff like that. I'm, you know, just so much division over this stuff and so much ego and so much control. And that's all been us doing it. Yeah, they've given us a horrible habitat, low vibration, hellacious place to exist and play these things out. But, you know, I mean, people have been playing this shit out. But to change and, you know, and if people don't want to change, they'll stay in the old one or whatever. I don't know how it's all going to go down, but... I know that they will not be in the new one. Now, those games will not be there. That's the baggage you will not be able to get through the pearly gates with. You know what I mean? You will be trapped outside until you can let go of that stuff. Because you have to be able to come together as souls. That's uh, going up another level is the compassion for souls and the uh, unity and the non-judgmental and understanding how every soul is just trying to learn. They're all just going through experiences and trying to learn and trying to understand, understand themselves. And, you know, you can see just coming into the world, there's a lot to understand about each reality. And, um, but what I had wanted to say about the food bank thing was, um, that woman was up there, you know, I was, <laughs> I was only fourth in line there for a while, but, um, she, um, she was set up early and she was over there and she was talking to people and stuff, but she was in my direct view. And so I was, um, you know, I was already knew I was going to say something to her. And so I saw other people talking to her and there was somebody who went over and complained because they didn't get all their meals. Oh my God, I can't believe it. It's like, ah, oh. this is motherfucking goddamn dog food they're feeding them. And these people are looking forward to it. Like, oh, this is, uh, this world is oh, so much pain and suffering and uh, ignorance. And, uh, and I don't think of ignorance as being bliss because when the light is shown on something, how many people are happy about it that they didn't see it? No, everybody feels uh, shame and sorrow and guilt and all of that, you know. So I don't think ignorance is bliss. I think ignorance is um, is a, a hole to climb out of. And I think a lot of people, it's like a, this earth plane is full of craters of pain and suffering. And when you think about souls being energy, there's a lot of that energy that they're just they're down in that sludge of the craters of pain and suffering and it's going to take a lot you know that's the thing it's going to take a lot for a lot of people to climb out of these holes I've had so many conversations now with people and I'm always just really really surprised by some people's attitudes and stuff so and there's just so much to, you know, there's so much for people to really expand. Like, this really is going to take some time. I don't know about this really bad part. Like, there's going to be an end to uh, the medical tyranny, the banking enslavement, <clears throat> the attack on nature. There will be coming into that. I don't know if it, like, does it take huge amounts of people and us going to the court system? Does it take us dismantling the court system? Does it take us taking down the government little by little? I don't know. I mean, I thought it was going to be a lot more dramatic and things were going to move a lot faster than what they are. But the healing part and the part of um, uh, restructuring our and reprogramming how we interact with each other and how we develop as a society, I think that is going to take some time. I think a lot of people have a lot of stuff to learn and understand. I just, I, I didn't really know how bad it was. You know what I mean? Because so many people just put on a happy face. Nobody shows what's really going on. And that's part of the whole, you know, society where that was okay. You used to, oh, just put a label on it. <laughs> Call me this and, you know, that's what you're going to think I am. And uh, that's just not true. You know, the labels 
the labels are just a, a mask to hide behind. And some people, you know, they could have truly been trying to develop into the persona that went along with the, um, the definition of the label. Some people could have really been trying to become that for themselves and, you know, as their role in life. But it, 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 just like what I was saying with the movies, it just, it's, they don't show the depth. There's like, there's so much depth. And the only way to go deeper is to go inside. You have to get to know yourself. And that is a scary place when they tell you that so much of this world isn't even real. Like, and you go inside, then what are you doing in there? You know, it is an expansion of self. Going inside brings everything to life outside. It's weird. But I don't know. Is that part of the upside down, in, inverted, inside out world here? Is that what it's like in the higher realms? Is this us trying to escape from hell, the realm of hell? <laughs> so I don't know. But anyways, it's just for, for us to really notice in ourselves again as, um, you know, when we are seeing people and, you know, don't you notice your triggers, but notice your automatic assumptions of people and how easy, you know, it is if somebody can go out and, you know, fix their hair and put on some makeup and put on some clothes that suddenly you think like they have no problems. And most people right now are struggling hard, really struggling. Most people have had extreme uh, loss right now uh, with people physically leaving them, losing homes, losing relationships. Like, there's a lot of pain and suffering going on. And, you know, I knew this was all going to come. I just I didn't know it was going to be like this. I don't know. You just when you see things in your head, um, you know, you, you just don't see the whole thing you get. It's like an overview. I think that is part of even in the communication with the higher realms and stuff like that. It is an overview because they are out further. The whole purpose to project yourself in is so you can feel the experience. So you can be in the experience, not just observe it and see it from afar, but to feel what it's like to experience it. And pain and suffering is rough. <laughs> That's what I'm always telling them, man. Like, this is some fucking bullshit. <clears throat> but anyways, so hopefully any of that made sense because I still feel like I was just leaving stuff off. Oh, the lady. I'll, I'll finish that one because that'll pop back up again. So at the food bank and, um, you know, the, per the person saying, you know, that they're being shorted and they need their food. And I'm so listening to this conversation. I was like, man, there is people dependent on this. Like, ah, oh, so sad. But when I came out, um, I just went up to her and I said, last week when you had me sign up, I, I this isn't going to work for me because I'm a vegetarian and it confused her at first. She's like, what, what do you mean? Like, uh, well, can you just, um, what was it? It was something weird. She said, like, she definitely did not compute what I was saying. <clears throat> I guess it's not a natural narrative that she hears often. So it was like, wait a minute. What? 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 Oh, hold on. <laughs> what am I hearing here? But, um, so then when she got it, she got, oh, so, but you got the coupon that you signed up with that other lady to get the coupons for the farmer's market. And I said, yeah, I did. And that'll be better. And she goes, yeah, that'd be a lot better if you just eat vegetables. So anyways, I got that handled and it. I didn't have to, you know, tell her, hey, you're poisoning the world. As a matter of fact, you know, I had to be humbled by sitting there watching and seeing that there's people dependent even if I see it as poison and toxic and it's sad and I know it's killing people, there's nothing I can do. I mean, each person's going through their own awakening and a lot of it is going to have to do with um, health stuff and the medical tyranny that has been going on. That's going to be a big part of, I think, a lot of people's experience and, um, Luckily, you know, there's all going to be, it's, it's running parallel or running nose to nose with um, the new healing community that is coming to the surface 
So, you know, we're going to be focusing a lot more on the healing, but it's going to be directing people on that path because so many people are going to be faced with medical tyranny, I believe, you know, so we'll see how it plays out. But anyways, I'll talk to you later. Bye.